Okay, boys and girls, we're going, we're up to chapter five, Anything Man. Of course we had to keep Susie, Bobby Jean told Six. Malone, once he laid eyes on our spoils, we had to explain everything. But we've got the fireworks still. And now we have to get rid of them before anyone finds out or Corey hunt us down, I added. Bobby Jean glanced over his shoulder like Corey had followed us. Sticks raised an eyebrow. The kid who wanted to snuggle your baby sister. That's who you're afraid of? Well, when you put it like that, sheesh. You don't understand, Bobby Jean said. Corey Cormier is not someone you want to mess with. Bobby Jean knew more about Corey than I did since they were in the same grade. Bottom line, Corey was exactly the kind of boy you expect to be caught auctioning off a massive bag of probably stolen fireworks. He ruled the schoolyard like some kind of sixth grade mob boss. Listen, that was a shrewd deal. Sticks looked impressed. You gave up nothing and got something major in return. Hey, yeah. That was true. My chest and cheeks warmed beneath the glow of Stick's favor. Gave up nothing except an hour a day on chores, Bobby Jean grumbled. I have to do chores around the house anyway, Stick said, don't you? Well, yeah, Bobby Jean said, but not every day like this and not with Corey Cremier. I tapped my wrist as if I was wearing a watch. Speaking of which, we have to get back. Bobby Jean and I stared at the bag of fireworks. We were supposed to be hiding them from Corey. Instead, we wasted time explaining ourselves to Sticks Malone. I'll take them off your hands, Sticks said. Don't even worry about it. You'll never have to lay eyes on them again. He held out his hand. Bobby Jean and I glanced at each other. We give them to you in exchange for what? I tucked the bag back behind me. Stick smiled. Good. I'm glad you didn't fall for that. There's hope for you yet. In exchange for what? Bobby Jean echoed. Actually, I'd like to make you a more attractive offer. Sticks reached into his pocket and extracted two small cards. He handed one to me and one to Bobby Jean. The most surprising thing about it was that those ragged pants he was wearing had any pockets left that would hold anything. The card read, Sticks Malone, anything man. Of course, Sticks had a business card. He was just that kind of cool. Bobby Jean looked downright impressed. I was too. But mostly, I was noticing how the cards had no contact information on them. Let me work with you, Stick said. Work with us how, Bobby Jean asked. Sounds to me like you need a mediator. A mediator, Bobby Jean echoed. How's that new age stuff going to help us? His tone sounded exactly like Dad's when the yoga class came on TV, I snickered. No, a mediator, Sticks repeated, enunciating the syllables like a lawyer to help the Cormier kid see the error of his ways. I can do that. He said it with such intensity that I could almost see him pounding his fist into his palm. We don't want to hurt him. My protest sounded lame. Sticks shrugged, shrugged. No need. I'll just help him see that the fireworks are rightfully yours. Bobby Jean and I exchanged a glance that fell somewhere between say what and heck yeah. You covered for him, Sticks went on. That counts for something. You just have to parlay it into something more. Parlay, Bobby Jean said, negotiate. Make him see the value of what you've already given. Sure, sure, I said, although I wasn't sure at all what Sticks was talking about. 
Then when Cormier's out of the way, I'll show you how to get rid of that sack the right way. What's that mean, Bobby G. Nax? Sticks tapped his chin. We'll sell the fireworks or trade them for something. Like what, I asked. Uh, you don't have time for me to explain now, do you? Sticks said. He's probably already waiting. I lifted the fireworks bag again. Yeah, we have to go. What do we do with these? Bobby Jean looked around. He lowered his voice to a stage whisper. We can't leave them with him. Bobby Jean was not known for his subtlety. Sticks, of course, heard everything. I don't expect you to trust me right off, he said. Tuck them in the woods closer to your house. I won't even watch. Is that going to work? Bobby Jean wondered aloud. Sticks' expression turned eloquent. We soon learned that meant he was about to speechify us. Look, here's the deal. You stash the sack. In an hour, I'll come mediate your dispute with Cormier. Consider it handled. Then you owe me, right? So we'll sell or trade off the fireworks and share the proceeds. The stuff we get in return. I smiled to myself. Sticks had re finally realized that vocabulary was not among Bobby Jean's strengths. We got a deal, Sticks asked. I opened my mouth ready to agree. From minute one, I was all in on Sticks Malone. Wait, what's the split? Bobby Jean interjected, pr proving he wasn't born yesterday. Sticks' shoulder popped up. 50-50, I reckon. Nah, Bobby Jean answered. Two of us, one of you. That means thirds. Where he was getting these sudden smarts, I hadn't the foggiest. But I'm bringing all the expertise, Stick said. Would you rather have two thirds of nothing and a big problem on your hands, or would you rather have 50% of a whole lot problem free? Uh, Bobby Jean said. Sticks offered a ninja like smile. I jumped in. We could say the same to you. A third of the proceeds from our stash or 50% of nothing. I was getting the hang of it now. Negotiating felt good. Stick studied us hawk-like. Caleb and Bobby Jean Franklin, huh? He spoke our name slowly. Then grinned. I like how you two operate. A beat of silent pass. Fair enough, Stick said. We go thirds. The deal was on the table. Bobby Jean still looked skeptical. But how could we pass it up? That's my offer, Stick said. Take it or leave it. We took it. Okay, boys and girls, that is the end of chapter five.